What's up guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Today's video is gonna be the ultimate guide to Hilda's request. As you guys probably know, there's two main big parts of this update. One is Hilda's request, which is all to do with the new NPC and the new mini bosses and all of the items she sells. And the other part is the world modifiers, which is the new modes and the new difficulty sliders and portal options and all of that stuff. I've already made a video covering the world modifiers and a video covering all of the new stuff in the update. So I'll leave a link in the description to both of those if you're interested in that. But this video is specifically a guide to the Hilda's request part of the update. How to find the NPC, how to find the new dungeons, how to beat the new bosses, and how to craft the new stuff and unlock everything that you can buy at the new NPC. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is how to find Hilda. First of all, she spawns in the meadows. And just like Haldor, there's actually 10 possible spawns on your world. But as soon as you find the first one, she's deleted from all of the other locations. So you can only have one Hilda on the map, but you have 10 opportunities to find her. Now, I've seen a little bit of misinformation in terms of there being a specific range that she spawns. That's actually not true. Basically, the way world generation works in Valheim is the entire world is one big fixed map that's actually way bigger than the size of one world. And the game kind of picks one grid square out of that giant map to be your world. And then it forces the center part of it to be a meadows. Then it adds a ring of mistlands and the deep north and the ashlands. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you're probably going to find Hilda somewhere pretty close to the center or within the inner ring. But it is definitely possible for her to be pretty far away from the middle because there is a chance that meadows can spawn quite far out. However, it also means that there's probably a Hilda in any given direction from your spawn. So, so long as you pick a direction and explore in a pretty straight line all the way until you reach a Mistlands, there's a pretty good chance you find a Hilda, especially given the fact that her location will be revealed so long as you're within a certain radius. And said radius is actually pretty big. Now, once you get to Hilda, if you walk up to her and press C, you can see all of the items that you can buy. And we're going to cover some of these later in the video. But now, let's talk about how to find the mini bosses and how to beat them. Okay, so when you get to Hilda, you can actually walk up to this table right in front of her and press E to register chest locations. This is actually really easy to miss, but this is a huge help because now when you check your map, you can actually see the actual locations of the new dungeons, including the Smoldering Tomb, the Sealed Tower, and the Howling Cavern. In each of these dungeons is a new mini boss. So let's start out with the Smoldering Tomb. First of all, as with any boss fight, I highly recommend getting the rested buff before you enter because the boost in stamina recovery is going to be a huge help during the fight. I also recommend taking the bone mass ability as the damage reduction is going to really help, especially with some of the later mini bosses that get a little more difficult. But this one's not too bad. Let's go. Okay, so the Smoldering Tomb is not too difficult. But like all of the new dungeons, they're actually filled with one-star enemies. And because this is actually a crypt, technically, this one is filled with one-star skeletons. Now, this room type is the one that the new boss Brenner spawns inside of. So this type of room is what you're looking for. Okay, so we've found Brenner. The first thing I'm going to do is clear out these other enemies. These coffins, by the way, spawn skeletons in this special type of dungeon here. That's actually a new thing. Okay, so Brenna is actually weak to Blunt because she is a skeleton. But because she's also undead, she's also weak to spirit damage. So therefore, the Frosner is objectively the best weapon to use on her because it is actually both weapon types. Now, she has a couple of different types of attack. We've got this AoE attack, which is particularly cool. And the rest are pretty much just normal melee attacks. So, of course, you can dodge all the AoEs. And any melee attack can just be parried. Frankly, if you have the Frosner by this point, you'll make short work of this mini boss. It's actually a super, super powerful weapon. But obviously, this is a pretty early game mini boss. And there we go. Brenner defeated. Now, the Frosner is kind of OP for this. 
but I'm sure many of you guys do have it by this point. But if you don't, the next best blunt weapon you have is what I would recommend using. But make sure you stick with blunt. If you've unlocked silver but you don't have a Frosner, you could always go with a silver sword for the spirit damage. If you don't have that, just level up an iron mace and it will also make pretty short work of her. Now, when she's defeated, she'll drop a trophy and a chest. And this chest is what we're looking for to give to Hilda. So once you've found it, pick this up and take it back to Hilda. It's worth noting, by the way, that these chests are very heavy. This one weighs 200. So most likely, you're going to need a Meganyord from Haldor in order to take this back to the NPC. And it also cannot be teleported. So just bear that in mind. You're going to have to take this in a boat if it's on a different island. Okay, so once you're back to Hilda, to hand in the chest, you open up your inventory and put the chest onto the hot bar, walk up to Hilda, and press the corresponding number key to hand it in. And this triggers a unique animation that's actually really cool. And now, when you talk to Hilda, you've unlocked a bunch of new stuff that you can buy. The vast majority of this stuff is just cosmetic, it's just clothing and stuff. But there are a few functional things that she has in, in stock from the beginning that we'll cover later in the video, as well as a few bonus items as well, which we'll also talk about later. But yeah, this mechanic works exactly the same for every single chest that you find. So for the rest of the video, I'll just show you the strats for clearing the dungeons and beating the bosses before moving on to the new items. All right, so let's talk about the Howling Caverns. To starters, just like always, I recommend starting out by getting the rested buff before you go in and making sure you equip the bone mass buff. This dungeon is also filled with one star enemies, including the bats, which is kind of an interesting detail. So if you're not using very good armor and you stumble into one of these things, these bats will definitely catch you off guard. But yeah, for these, I recommend just using a shield so that you can block them when they get close and just melee in them. But this dungeon, I highly recommend you make sure you clear out the dungeon completely of enemies before taking on the boss. Because I think this is actually the hardest mini boss. And one of the reasons for that is just how many enemies you can end up fighting at once. But the good thing about caves is that you can actually be quite stealthy and pick all of the enemies off one by one. Right, I'm going to try and save my bone mass buff until we bump into the boss. So what I actually recommend for these dungeons in general is to use the bow to try and get a stealth bonus on any of the sleeping enemies from range. Oh, here we go. So this is actually a perfect example. It looks like we've got some enemies sleeping at the bottom of these stairs. Should be able to pick them off from up here. Although we instantly delete half their HP because of the stealth. So yeah, you can just fly in if you want, if you're super confident. But if you take your time... Clearing these dungeons is actually quite easy. Uh, one of the reasons to be cautious, by the way, is that it's very easy for the boss to end up sneaking up on you and catching you off guard in this situation. I do always recommend, by the way, bringing multiple stacks of tasty meads, of stamina potions, and of whatever the best health potion is you have access to. Because being out of stamina is a huge problem because you won't be able to dodge or run away. And you can just instantly use your stamina potion when you're in a crisis and you need to get away quickly with a jump or a dodge or whatever and then whilst that potion's on cooldown if you need to more quickly recharge your stamina you can just pop a tasty mead because those can be used even if your stamina potion is on cooldown all right here we go there's a few more ulves here but you can see just by taking it kind of slow backing off a little bit being a little bit stealthy even in this situation we make pretty short work of them it's a perfect example i just run out of stamina I can actually tank quite a lot of uh, damage here. This is not flawless, but I have a lot of HP and armor. I'm actually going to pop a health potion just in case. I do recommend using whatever the best armor is you have access to. Oh, and here's the boss. All right, so I'm actually going to mostly try and run away from the boss at this point to still focus on taking out any of these enemies that are potentially in our way. Let me just clear out a few more enemies. Oh my God, a two-star ult. That's not good. All right, now we've mostly cleared out all of the enemies. I'm actually going to put on the uh, dwarven helmet so you guys can see. But I would recommend just wearing a regular helmet for the best armor value. So anyway, as you can see, you can just keep running around the dodge and if you're not ready to fight yet. I'm now going to put my bone mass ability. Okay, so before I actually take on the fight, I just want to briefly explain. This boss is also weak to spirit. So 
the best weapon to use is going to be the weapon that does the most amount of spirit damage. If you have a Mist Walker, then that is your best option. A Frosner is also good, but if you have made it to the mountains, then you should at least have access to a Silver Sword. And a Silver Sword is also really good for this fight because it is one of the highest spirit damage weapons in the game. So you can still do it with relatively early game stuff. All right, so let's do this fight and I'll explain the attacks. So as you can see, there's this AoE attack. Now the AoE attack is the main one that you're just gonna wanna get away from the boss with. When he does this attack, just run away. Because even if you dodge, if you stay too close, you're still gonna take that AoE damage. So as soon as you see this slamming animation, just run away and wait for it to be over. Now, when you see the enemy use two hands like this and sort of do that pullback animation with both hands, that means it's about to do this frost attack. And this attack is actually in a straight line. So you can actually dodge roll that attack just fine. And then any one-handed attacks can be parried. So this is my strat for fighting the boss. Two-hand attack, dodge roll, attack twice. One-hand attack, parry, attack twice. Parry, attack twice. Out of stamina, pull off, use a stamina potion. AoE attack, stay away. Move close, dodge roll, two-hand attack, attack twice. One-hand attack, parry, attack twice. One-hand attack, block, attack twice aoe move away tasty mead because the stamina potion is on cooldown get close two hand attack dodge attack twice wait for the parries running out of stamina pull off tasty mead aoe so we move away and we kind of just rinse and repeat this strategy two hand attack dodge roll attack twice one hand parry one hand parry you quite have the stamina for the last attack there use a tasty mead two hand attack dodge roll attack twice one hand parry 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 dodge roll attack parry something else you can actually do if you want to get really technical is that when this attack is happening you can actually try and get a secondary attack in because it does last quite a long time i kind of just <laughs> messed up there just because i was demonstrating that so i'll pop a healing potion also when you're away waiting for the aoe you can always get a hit in with a ranged attack with either a bow or something like the demolisher if you really want Okay, AoE. See, you can dodge AoEs, by the way. It's just that you want to make sure you dodge away from it. Because if you're still standing in it, you're going to take damage, obviously. And there we go. With a little patience, we defeat the boss handily. Now, obviously, we've got late game gear here. But it won't be much different. As long as you use the best food options that you have available to you. I always recommend two health and one stamina food. And your best potions and your best armor. It will work the same way. It'll just be a little bit slower to do. But as long as you're using the silver sword or better and you bring along potions, it honestly won't be much different. All right, the sealed tower. So this is where things get a little more complicated. First of all, you actually want to gain entrance to the very bottom of the sealed tower, but you can only get in from high up. But the higher up you go, the harder it's going to be. And sometimes sealed towers actually have balconies that are pretty low down. So first of all, I recommend circling around and looking for a balcony. Now, if your tower doesn't have a balcony like this one, don't worry about it. The same process still applies. But it will just be a little easier if you do have one. But it's the same amount of enemies to deal with either way. It's just if you're planning on just beelining it straight to the boss, it's a little easier with a balcony. All right, so I recommend bringing a ton of wood for this because you're going to have to climb your way up. And honestly, the simplest way is to just look for the clearest part of the tower. If you have no balconies, the least obstructed route is actually probably going to be the fastest. Because you're just going to build your own way up anyway. So we're going to place a workbench. And then we're going to go for ladders. And if you just turn ladders sideways, you can place them just directly on the wall like this. And it'll actually just float and work perfectly. So yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to keep going with these ladders. And alternate directions a little bit. I'm bringing 100 wood for this, by the way, but less is probably fine. And I also recommend making sure you have at least over 100 health for this climbing portion, because that is the max fall damage you can take. So look, if we fall all the way down like this, still absolutely fine. And yeah, if you fall from like max fall damage height, as long as you have over 100 HP, even if it's 101, you'll still survive. So this isn't the prettiest way of getting up, but it is very effective and very simple now as you can hear this tower is filled with fuelings so for this we just want the best 
raw damage we can do for you at this point in the game that is probably going to be a black metal sword which is not much different in raw damage to the mist walker so you can't go wrong with that all right so we're almost here now it's time to clear out the fuelings so i'm just flying in here with the mist walker and the carapace armor of course it will be a little different if you don't have this gear but obviously the mist lands is only one biome ahead of this gear that we've got right now so it's not out of the question for you to have end game gear doing this this is the second to last biome after all but this will be just as good with full padded armor pretty much and a black metal sword our objective now is just to go room to room killing all of the fuelings as we work our way down oh shaman's gonna be a problem Let's pop a health potion real quick there we go i'm fine also you gotta watch out for these traps you can deal with these just by shooting them then they just immediately disabled and these iron gates will actually easily be destroyed with just a couple of hits they're actually like rusted iron gates so you can break through them very easy so that's how you break those down and we just keep going working our way down we don't have to fight all of the fuelings in this scenario by the way these ones are actually just trapped in there we just want to fight the ones that are sort of in the way and can run down towards during the boss fight because the boss is right at the bottom of the tower one tip with fuelings by the way they have a ton of animations that waste a ton of time so if you see one just walking around in between attacks just don't hesitate to sprint up to him and just start attacking shamans by the way they have this big charge attack look you can like basically kill them before they even get that off so like this fueling's just like running away so is this one all right so now i see i'm at the bottom because i can see the stone floor through the door so therefore i'm gonna pop my bone mass ability now this boss is unique in that it's technically two bosses but actually you basically just fight this one berserker enemy type and then you fight the one shaman enemy type these bosses aren't really weak to anything so your best bet is going to be to go with the best raw damage i have available so again mist walk is great for this but the black metal sword is almost as good as a mist walk in this scenario because the mist walker's spirit damage is not really like that useful in this scenario but if you like the crom that could work as well potentially anything that's good raw damage now these slam attacks can actually be parried by the way it doesn't look like it but they can so parry parry i'm gonna back off when he does this one just so i can recharge some stamina parry when he pauses to this animation you know that he's just applying a shield so you can get a bunch of damage in in that scenario if you want it's backing off to use a tasty me to recover some stamina he's doing this animation so it means that the shame is going to attack parry parry i'm actually going to back off and use a health potion that means the shame is going to attack i'm out of stamina so i'm going to try and run away a bit now up in a tasty mead to recover more stamina this animation so i'm just going to tank that fire hit and get some more attacks in parry again we're just going to go for a tank on this one you could, you might be able to tank these attacks as well even if you got max padded to be honest it's probably safer to run away if you're a bit more patient than i am all right we should be able to finish him during this animation now so now we just have the shaman and the shaman because he focuses on range attacks anytime he's not doing a range attack it's the perfect time for us to attack this animation is the same as with any shaman he's just us applying a shield and then when he starts pointing is when you really have to worry because that's when he's going to do a fire attack and the fire attack is pretty bad like it is with any shaman but any of time he's not pointing is basically the time to attack and when he is pointing just run horizontally to the direction that he's pointing and you should be able to dodge it pretty easily you could always keep your distance because it's easier to dodge the uh, range attacks if you're at a distance close the distance for sure during this animation though it's tasty mead recover stamina i'm sprinting horizontally when he does the fire attack and boom that is the planes mini boss defeated all right so now you've handed in all of your chests you've officially unlocked all of the items that you can buy at the new hilda npc and the vast majority of them are just clothes but let's cover a few key items that aren't clothes so first of all as soon as you find hilda you'll actually be able to buy the barber kit for 600 gold. You don't need to beat any bosses to get this. And with this, you're able to craft the new barber station. The barber station requires 10 fine wood, one barber kit, five bronze nails, and five troll hide. And this, by the way, does not need shelter. You can place this anywhere, walk up to it, press E, and now you can officially change your Vikings hairstyle and beard mid-game. 
can also buy an iron pit, which when combined with warm wood, allows you to place a fire pit wherever you want. Basic fireworks can also be purchased from Hilda, and you can combine these at a workbench with either blueberries, gray dwarf eyes, gook, turnips, raspberries, or dandelions to make a firework of the corresponding color. And to use a firework, you simply use them on a fire and then sit back and watch the show. With the update, you can now also upgrade your golder table to level three with unfading candles, which can be crafted with 10 black marble, three skeleton trophies, 10 refined ether and 15 resin. And black forges can now also be upgraded to level three with the new vice improvement that can be crafted with five iron, eight copper and two mechanical springs. And that's it. That is officially how to find Hilda, how to beat all of the new bosses and how to craft all of the new stuff. All that's left is to buy some new threads and become the most fashionable Viking in the land. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and a nice positive comment for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for future content. I do actually stream live on this very YouTube channel and also live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nick So I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that. If you'd like to support the content financially and help keep my dream alive of being able to continue to do this for you guys, then the best way you can do that is on Patreon at patreon.com slash Nick So I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that as well. You can join my Discord and follow me on social media at the links below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, have a good one.